Hi there, welcome back. Uh, this week we're going to make our fruit cake look beautiful for Christmas Day. So the cake that I'm using is not the one that you saw me cook last week. Don't ask me why, it's too hard to explain. This happens to be a boiled fruit cake, one I make a lot. And it's not quite as high as the rich fruit cake I made, um, but it's a mighty fine cake. So to cover it with fondant, you simply buy two packets of the icing from the supermarket. I use the Orchard brand and two packets will give you a really generous covering. If you want to be fussy, you can put almond paste on the cake. You can buy it or make it. Recipes are everywhere. And it does give you a much more professional finish to the cake. But, you know, a lot of people do not like almond paste. Uh, it's, it's got its own unique flavour. I happen to like it, but not that many people do, especially kids. So this is a kind of a lazy way of making uh, a cake look beautiful, just using the fondant. You do need to put something sticky on the cake to make the fondant clean. I'm using apricot jam, and I found that this, uh, this particular Bon Mama apricot conserve is good because it hasn't got many lumps in it. So I don't really know where apricots turn up, but there you are, taste apricotty, but it's quite nice to handle. So to make it better for the cake, I just warmed it very carefully over the heat. You can do it in the microwave, but watch it because it will burn. And then just pushed it through a strainer while it was hot. And so you, you end up with a very thick sort of puree, which works a treat. Brush it on fairly liberally um, onto the cake. Make sure that you go down the sides and on the corners. Otherwise, you'll have little air pockets. So just be a little bit fussy, take your time, and do this before you start to handle the fondant. I know you're itching to go, I don't know, it's the life of its own. But you've just got to be a little bit fussy. See that little hole there on the corner? That's because I did the cheats way of lining the cake pan. So when I pulled the paper away, uh, I managed to lose a bit of a corner. But I'll just catch that little piece in a sec. Years ago, when I was 15, so it's quite a few years ago, I did a cake decorating course um, at the local, then called Technical College, night school, I think they called it. And as a result, um, I've handled this, this part of cake decorating a lot. I was always the one that, you know, people said, I'll oh, just put a bit of icing over a cake for me. Yes, yes. <laughs> anyway, it's all good. So now we're ready to knead the, the fondant, also called soft icing, depending on the brand that you buy. Make sure your hands are clean. Make sure the bench is clean. Make sure that you haven't got any crumbs lurking that might end up in the icing. So release the, the two, the two um, lumps of fondant and I just break them in half and then just start working them. This takes a little while depending on the room temperature and the temperature of your hands. If you have hot hands, you'll find that your fondant will get softer quicker. My hands tend to be a bit on the cool side. If you feel any little lumps, of the fondant that are a bit hard, just give them a flick. It's just where the, the packaging has made them a little bit crisp. I can feel another bit there. Just give them, get rid of them. So this is quite a lump of fondant to handle, which is why I'm breaking it up and doing the two pieces separately, and then I'll just join them together. I'm using pure icing sugar simply because icing sugar mixture or whatever they're currently putting in, they look at changing the name, um, has corn flour in it and it makes the icing softer. And you don't want that. You want it to be quite firm. 
platform and, uh, and pliable. So once you've got the, the lumps of the fondant together, you then knead them until they're sort of combined properly and they're smooth. Now the way you knead is pretty hard to explain, I think. You t in theory, you're turning the outside edges into the middle like that, but you don't want to, you don't want to knead like it's a bread dough and you don't want to knead it like it's a scone dough. Scone dough, you barely knead it. A yeast dough, you, you knead it hard. But this one, you just want to keep turning that outside edge in until you've got a nice smooth surface. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay, so that wasn't too hard. I wish more people would use this icing because it really is quite beautiful. You do have to sift it. Okay, so now you roll it out. Using the roller, roller pin. Take that knife again. This is my mother's roller pin. You roll it out, bearing in mind the shape of the cake and the size of the cake. Don't roll over the edges, roll to the edges. And it'll, it'll be better. So I just take a look at the rolling pin. So it's the length of the rolling pin plus a bit more. So that's where I'm headed. And just as you go, just gently pull the, let's call it fondant, into shape. No point making it circular if you're going onto a square cake. Keep turning it, don't turn it over because you will not have a smooth bottom like you have a smooth top here. Just keep gently pulling it into shape and try and keep it the same thickness throughout. So what have we got? Not enough yet. And watch out for any little bits of dust that might fly in, insects, little little lumps, anything. Just keep an eye out for them and just take them away, pull them out. Now, when you come to lift this onto the cake, there's a certain amount of stretch that's going to happen. So just make allowances for that. Let's see. So that's a little bit more. Oops. See how easy it is. It gets away from you. Let it get out of shape. Okay. That's about right. So it's a little bit smaller than the cake. I just generally run the fingers underneath just to get rid of that surplus icing sugar under there. Then I don't roll in there, you see? I don't roll it up in the rolling pin. I just, this is only a relatively small cake. Just lift it over there. And then just pop it over the cake. And that wasn't too hard. Let me just clear a little bit of this away. It seems to be a bit messy. And then with your sugared hands, just, oh, I forgot to catch that corner. It doesn't matter, you won't see it. Just ease those corners in. So you don't want that big pleat there. So you just gently work it like that and you can get rid of that corner, that pleat on it. Did you see how it stretched that little bit? Okay, make sure it's hanging onto the sides. 
don't fuss too much. I tend to keep going back and think, oh, I can just make it a little bit smoother here or there. Don't worry about it. Just smooth it with your fingers, your hands. Make sure you haven't got any rings on. Plays havoc. And that's it. There's a little hard bit there that I've missed. Let's get rid of that. So, then with a sharp knife, preferably with a long blade, just cut it, cut off the surface close to the cake. Now, if you want to, you can make all sorts of little bells and doodads out of the scraps. Let them dry till they become really crisp, hard, and you can use the paint them, colour them. It's endless what you can do. Just cut that little bit off the corner. A little bit of jam has escaped there. Don't worry. Now on the other side, and that's pretty easy. Now, it already looks quite good. And if you didn't really want to do anything else to it, that'd be fine. The trick is to make sure that the icing comes right down. In this case, I'm just doing it on a piece of paper, but normally you do it on a board, uh, which I couldn't find by. I didn't have one the right size, I had all round ones. So the thing is you need to seal the sides and you just do that by making sure that the content comes right down low, <coughs> excuse me, on the cake. That's it done. So the next thing you do is put it onto, in, in this case, I'm going to use a plate, a uh, platter, really. Now, just to get it off there, if you want to, you can take a little bit of this icing, say about that much, and put a little bit of water with it and make it into a paste. Pop it onto the plate and it will anchor the cake. It's not really important if you're just going to be at home for Christmas, but say you were taking a cake in the car somewhere, they do often want to move about on the plate or the board. So that's just a way of anchoring. I'm not going to bother now because it's not going anywhere. So this is the way I do it. I just pull the cake out of the edge of the bench just to get rid of this paper. Put my hand under it. And then hopefully get it in the middle of the cake. Now, a little bit of hand washing. See what a messer I am. Oh well. You see, it looks pretty already. It's really, you don't have to do much if you can manage the white fondant. It's beautiful. I'll just wash my hands. You'll need a metre and a half of ribbon. Um, the, the width of the ribbon depends, of course, on the depth of your cake. So I've cut that to fit with overlapping a little bit. So I'm just using these pins. I call them berry pins now. They used to be wedding pins. But anyway, things change. 
to your, I'll turn this round for you in a second. So just secure them with pins. You can do this with icing, but it's not as good as the pins. Just count the pins and make sure nobody eats them. It's not a good look. I nearly killed my great grandmother with a pin. Anyway, she survived. Uh, then a bow. Uh, I've just made a regular bow that I will pin on there. And a couple. This is the fun part. But if you've never used fondant before, trust me, give it a go. It is so easy to use, providing you don't play around with it too much. But it's, it's, it's just a godsend, it really is. It can cover up a multitude of sins with cakes. Okay. So this fondant is still soft perfect world you'd let it get hard which takes a day or even more depending on the humidity in the air but um, it, it, it's much better if it's allowed to set completely it's much easier to work with you know I'm nervous that I'm going to put big dents in it all the time because it's still so soft and you feel you can't pull the ribbon too tight so if you've got the opportunity to cover the cake a day or two before you really need to, well then it will be much easier for you. Lift these tails a bit long. Okay. Alrighty. So there it is with its ribbon on. And you can see that little bit there where I pulled that little crunchy bit out. If you massage that enough, that, that would vanish miraculously. So the last thing I'm going to do, to make it look even prettier, is just put a star um, in the middle of the cake. This happens to be a candle holder. You can find a star shape at Christmas time just about anywhere. Sometimes it's a decoration for a tree or something off a card, whatever. If you want to do bells, you know, it's it's pretty easy. But I thought a star would look pretty. So right, I, I don't want to press it into the fondant because then you'd have quite a groove. But I thought if I just marked the points of the star, and then I've got some little decorations. Did I mark it in there? I don't remember. Yes, I did. I went looking for silver cashews the other day and couldn't find them. What's happened in the world? COVID, let's blame COVID. So take that off and there's the star shape. Did I? Yes, I've got them all there. And then I'm just going to mark out the star with um, these little pearly, little pearly cashews. So that shouldn't take me long. Now I'm, I do cake decorating, but I thought that I would pretend that I've never cake decorated in my life because a lot of people haven't. In fact, most people haven't. So I thought, well. I'll just buy what I can from the supermarket. So this is like a royal icing, which is very easy to make, but this is very convenient. And they give you a little kit of uh, piping tubes as well. So we'll just, I've never used one of those before, this should be fun. So we'll just mark where the little pin pricks are. ways that you could make these cashews stick. You could pipe a line of royal icing or, or this icing and put them on or individually put them on with tweezers like I did, the little tiny blob of, of the icing to make them stick. Um, 
either way works. But as I said before, what would be so much easier was if the fondant was firm and set. So I hope you've enjoyed this session and uh, there'll be time for questions later on. And uh, thank you for watching and Merry Christmas. <laughs>